Hey there, welcome back as we continue our look at the seven wonders of the ancient world. Last week's wonder was kind of unspectacular. This week's wonder has a lot better of a story, and it even gave us a word that we still use to this day. Today we're going to be looking at the mausoleum of Halicarnassus. It was constructed for a guy named Mausoleus, and it wasn't as grand or large as the other wonders that we've seen. So why was it even considered a wonder? Well, we're going to get into that later. The word mausoleum actually comes from this wonder. It was constructed in a place called Halicarnassus. It was said to be founded by the Dorian Greeks. This is another Greek tribe like the Ionian Greeks. Excavations at the site actually show that it was first occupied sometime around 5,000 years ago. Around 500 BCE, a woman named Artemisia married the king of Halicarnassus. Her marriage happened right before the Ionian Revolt. The Ionian Revolt was nothing more than the Greek city-states getting fed up with Persia's support of oppressive leadership. This leadership demanded more and more tribute and more and more services to them. This ultimately led to the Persians cracking down and starting the Greco-Persian War. Artemis' husband dies at some point during this time. We don't know his name, but what we do know is that she took the throne, but not as queen, but as regent for her son, Pisandalius. Her first major naval battle was actually the Battle of Armisium. During this battle, she made a name for herself by the tactics she employed. The Greeks hated her so much that they actually put a bounty of 10,000 drachma on her head, either dead or alive. She further cemented her legacy at the Battle of Salamis. <laughs> when she showed just how ruthless she could actually be. During the battle, she was being chased by a Greek ship. She had one option, to ram a Persian ship. She rams the Persian ship, sinking it. And the Greek ship thought, she's on our side, so they stopped the chase. Xerxes was on the sideline watching the whole thing. After the battle, he rewarded her for her acts, thinking that she sank a Greek ship by ramming it. It was also during this time in the 5th century BCE that we got the birth of Herodotus, one of the best known historians ever. He was best known for writing about the war between the Greeks and the Persians, but being Greek and all, he tended to be a little bit biased in his writings, referring to anybody that wasn't Greek as being barbarian. Under the rule of Artemis and then Mausolus, the city saw new prosperity. There was a great wall that was constructed around the city. New public buildings and roads were constructed. There was even a secret dockyard and canal constructed. Mausolus came to power as a satrap for Persia. The satrap was nothing more than a governor for Persia that ruled a specific area of the Persian Empire. He started his rule in either 377 or 376 BCE, and he ended it in 353 BCE. You could say that Mausolus was kind of a wild card. In 362 BCE, he joined up with the other satraps of Anatolia in a revolt against Artaxerxes II. Mausolus seen that the revolt was not going his way, so he just left. After the revolt, Mausolus was actually left pretty well alone, because I guess you reward bad behavior. It was during this time that he actually expanded his territory by conquering part of Lycia and some Greek city-states. Now we get to the mausoleum that was more famous than the man himself. Planning for the mausoleum started before he even died. It was constructed between 353 and 351 BCE, but after he died, his sister wife Artemisia II actually put the finishing touches on the mausoleum. The mausoleum was designed by two Greek architects named Satyro and Pythias. We're not really sure if Pythias was the other one because there's so many different spellings of his name it brings into question if he was actually one of the architects. The original description for the mausoleum actually comes from Finley the Elder. He said that the footprint for the mausoleum was almost 140 meters squared. The building itself from north to south was 20 meters and the two fronts he says, not being so wide in extent, the building stood 25 cubics, or in modern standards, 45 meters tall. But as with so many writings from the past, the archaeological record actually shows discrepancies between what he wrote and what we actually found. What we have found through archaeological excavations is that the building was actually only 38 by 32 meters. This was determined by the location of the cornerstones sitting in situ. In situ means the objects haven't been moved since they were placed originally. <laughs> The mausoleum is broken up into four main parts. You had the base or the podium, then above that was a colonnaded section. Above that was a 24-step pyramid, and then it was all topped by a very large statue. The top of the base was decorated with marble friezes. These friezes depicted the Greeks and the Amazons fighting, along with chariot races. The statue at the top was described by Finley to be a chariot pulled by four horses. A fragment of the chariot wheel is believed to have been found, and if it is the chariot wheel, the wheel itself would have been two meters in height, giving the statue itself an overall height of about six meters. As I mentioned at the start of the video, the mausoleum was not as large or grand as other structures we've seen. So why was it considered a wonder? It has to do with the way it was decorated. There were friezes and statues all over the mausoleum. Some of the statues were as large as three meters tall. It's originally thought the mausoleum had a hundred statues. We've only managed to recover fragments of 66 of them though. Mausoleus's tomb was located in the base of the mausoleum. It was sat on faunal remains of sheep, oxen, 
lambs and birds. The animal bones were thought to be part of a funerary feast for Mausolus. And just like many other wonders in this area, an earthquake is what eventually destroyed it, sometime between the 11th and 15th century CE. And after its destruction by Mother Nature, the Knights of St. John actually repurposed parts of the mausoleum and their new Bodrum Castle in 1404 CE. After Mausolus' death, the city would trade hands many times. In 334 BCE, the city was conquered by Alexander the Great. He put a lady named Ada of Caria in charge. She is said to have adopted Alexander so that his bloodline would always rule over the city. Unfortunately for Alexander and his bloodline, this wasn't going to be the case. Not long after his death, the city started changing hands rapidly. But around 197, the city managed to gain its own independence. But it was very short-lived, because in 129 BCE, the Romans conquered the city. By this time, Halicarnassus was just a shell of its former self. Much of the city had been destroyed by earthquakes, and they were under constant attack by pirates. I want to thank you all for watching, and I want to thank the patrons. With their support, I'm able to make these videos happen. And when I die, I don't want a large structure built for me. I just want to be launched out of a cannon and leave me where I lie.